I'm going to show you how I make and apply ground goop for scenery ground cover on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more model railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure to subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. In past videos, you have seen me work on scenery in a number of different ways. You've seen how I build my scenery base. You've seen ways that I make and paint or stain rocks. You've seen me applying different kinds of ground cover and applying trees. Well, today I'm going to try a new process that's been around for a very long time, but it's new to me. It's the first time that I've used it. And that is, I'm going to be using ground goop. Now, ground goop was a, is a formula that was put together and expounded by Lou Sassy years ago. It's been talked about in the Model Railroad Press for years by a number of different uh, uh, of authors and, and different magazines. And there are a lot of people who use variations of ground goop today. And I'm going to be making some ground goop and showing you how I apply it today. And the reason why I want to use ground goop on the mountain scenery behind me is because what I have now is plaster that is painted. And the problem is when I drill to plant trees into that, I get all that white plaster coming up, and then I have to cover that up or, or remove it some way from the layout. By using ground goop, as you will see, uh, the ground cover itself has color to it so that whatever I drill into it, whatever may come out or whatever may show through, will be the same color as my ground color. And that is really, really valuable. Now, you're going to want to stick around to the end of this video, because in the end of this video, I'm going to have some special announcements that you're going to want to hear, including one about a giveaway that's coming up on my channel. So you want to make sure that you stick around and catch those announcements. Now, let's get over to the workbench and start making some ground goop. Before we mix up some ground goop, let me go over the recipe for ground goop. Uh, what I'm going to mix up today is very, very close to Lou Sassy's original recipe uh, with just slight modification. Uh, but let me tell you a little bit about it. Uh, the first ingredient to our ground goop is celluclay. Uh, now, celluclay, some of you are familiar with, uh, many of you are with Sculptamold. Uh, and Sculptamold, of course, is a paper mache material with plaster mixed in with it. And you can make uh, a nice uh, plaster kind of a substance that you can do uh, scenery work with Sculptamold. And it has a long working time and then it, it gets nice and hard. Celluclay has the same kind of paper mache type of, of base to it, but it's just that recycled paper uh, ground up very fine. It doesn't have any plaster in it. By the way, these first two ingredients uh, can be found on Amazon. And if you check out the description down below, my pick of the week, I will include links to celluclay as well as to the second ingredient, which is vermiculite. Now, celluclay, you can probably find in art stores as well. It's kind of an art-making project uh, type of material. Uh, vermiculite, uh, again, I'll have a link to it uh, that, where you can get it on Amazon in the Picks of the Week down below. But you, you find vermiculite in gardening centers. Uh, it is actually uh, mixed in with soil to help keep soil loose and help keep it uh, holding moisture. If you buy potting soil, you notice a lot of times the little white uh, things that are in the potting soil and some granular stuff, that is vermiculite. And uh, vermiculite specifically has that purpose of keeping things from getting too compacted and, and keeping them loose. Um, in addition to that, you're going to mix in uh, the color of, of uh, paint that you use for your ground cover. Now, the area that I'm going to be working on uh, with this particular batch is going to be in my mountain area. Uh, if I were working in my flatlands, uh, a part of my layout in, in my Texas area, I would use this color right here, which is a tan color. This is actually a Valspar. It's called Indian Moccasin. You can kind of see the color right there. Working in my mountains, uh, I actually mix this tan color with a gray, uh, also a Valspar color. Uh, this is called uh, quarry gray and a stone quarry gray. And what I mix is I mix about three-fourths uh, tan with one-fourth of the gray for the ground cover in my mountain area. So I'll be mixing those together 
Uh, but whatever you use for your ground cover, the, the color, is what you're going to want to mix in here. Um, and then in addition to that, you're going to use some glue. And specifically, you want to use white glue. And uh, we're looking at Elmer's products here. There are other brands. Uh, but you want to get something that's similar to Elmer's Glue All. Uh, now, Lou Sassy, in his recipe, as I've seen it, says specifically on it, do not use school glue. Uh, I, I did a little research because I wanted to know why. I always kind of thought school glue was basically the same as Glue All, only a little more watered down. What I discovered is that that's not exactly the difference. Uh, school glue is made to be washable so that if kids get it in their clothes or in their hair or whatever else, uh, it can be washed out even after it's dry. School glue, if you get it wet, uh, it will soften up and it will wash off. Glue all is, uh, uh, cleans up with water. It's water soluble. Uh, but whenever it dries, it is water resistant. Now it, it can eventually be softened and, and, and cleaned up with water. Uh, but it doesn't completely dissolve again like the school glue will. Uh, you can actually, if you're careful, you can, you can, uh, wipe down and, and wash joints that have glue all they're much more water resistant make sure that you're using glue all if you're using elmer's or an, uh, if you're using another brand make sure it's something similar to glue all not something that is so easily washable that it will uh, uh that it will wash away and then the last thing that lou sassy included uh, was a, a disinfectant he specifically named a lysol concentrate disinfectant uh, I'm not sure if you can even get that anymore. What I'm going to be using is a pine cleaner. Uh, now, the purpose for this is if you're going to be storing your ground goop for any period of time, you don't want it to mold or mildew. Uh, and what you want is you want some sort of a cleaner that has something in it that is a disinfectant that will help uh, control mold or mildew in the bowl. Uh, anything that has a little bit of ammonia in it is going to do a good job of that. Now, again, I'm working from inexperience here, uh, but I feel very, very strongly that, that, uh, that this kind of a pine cleaner, it's a disinfectant, it has some ammonia to it. I, I think it's going to work just fine for that. And when we mix our ground goop up, what we're going to literally use is we're going to use one part celluclay, one part vermiculite, one part of the paint, uh, and I'll be mixing these together, but total, I'll be using one part of the paint and, and just a splash of the disinfectant of the cleaner. And, and then the, the question mark comes about how much glue to use. Uh, Lou Sassy said he used three quarters of a part. So whatever you use of each of these others, I use three quarters of that amount for the glue. Uh, I hear others that use about half a part of glue and then add some water to fully, to, to further dilute that. Uh, my friend Andy Crawford, if you're familiar with him through YouTube Model Builders or, or other places, he uses ground group and, and loves it, but he doesn't put any glue in his as, at all because uh, he, he doesn't care for the, the, the way it comes out with the glue in it. Uh, I'm going to try using it with a, a half part glue and then a little bit of water as I need it to, to make that, uh, uh, be able to mix up well and, and flow together. So, um, I'm going to move some of these things back out of the way and uh, I'm going to start mixing up today. And literally, if you're going to be keeping your ground goop for any period of time, you're going to want something that you can put it in that will seal. I have just this sherbet container. This is a one quart sherbet container. It has a lid. It will seal up. And so I'm going to mix it up in this and, um, and then I can seal up any that I don't use. You can see I have already put my celluclay and my vermiculite in here and I'm using a, a cup uh, for um, the, my part. Now here I wanted you to see the celluclay. I've already broken this up some, but as you see, it, when it comes in this box, it's inside of a plastic bag. Uh, but it's like a brick, and this, this paper is really pressed together and stuck together. So as you get it out of the bag and as you measure it out, you're going to want to kind of break it up a little bit. It does have some, some powder to it, as you see. And of course, as I'm doing that, I'm also mixing it in a little bit with that vermiculite. And uh, we'll further mix that together uh, in a few moments. Um, Next, I want to get my paint. And so I have my measuring cup here. This is a measuring cup that I bought for model railroading. I'm saying that because, guys, you don't want to go grab one of your wife's good mixing cups and start mixing paint in it. Uh, so I have this one dedicated just for this purpose. Uh, 
Okay, and then I'm going to just literally pour that. That's one cup. That's the same amount as I used of both the cellular clay and the um, vermiculite. Now, I'm going to use about half a part of my glue wall. So I'm just going to take the lid off of this and uh, just going to squeeze this right into my measuring cup up to about half a cup, which will be uh, most of this bottle. I'm going to add that in here. Looks delicious, doesn't it? And then finally, I want just a little bit of this cleaner. Uh, and they say use a cap. Now, this has got a pretty small cap, but I'm still going to use it as a guide. But since it's so small, I'm going to put probably two of those little capfuls, just enough to get that disinfectant through it. Um, of course, that pine cleaner, it has that, that piney ammonia smell to it, so it's kind of got that nice odor. Um, and then I'm just, I'm using, literally, I'm using a large popsicle stick here uh, as a stirrer. And I'm just going to start mixing all this together. You want it to be a, you know, a, a somewhat thick clay-like uh, consistency, but you also want it to be thin enough that you can spread it. So, uh, you know, I don't want it overly thick. And this is getting pretty thick as I'm mixing it. I think I am going to add just a little water. This is just my paint uh, cup that I wash my paint brushes out in. I've got some clean water, or as clean as it could be, in that cup. Uh, in it. Add a little water just to help mix this up. Now, I'm going to go on the advice of my friends who use this, and several of them have said that the best way to use ground goop is to mix it up and then let it set at least overnight. Um, that will just allow all of the moisture, the paint, everything to fully uh, permeate its way through all of that paper mache material and, and, and everything just to soak together. They say mix it up really, really good, then let it sit overnight, and then come back and kind of mix it again before you use it. In fact, I've had uh, a couple guys say it's really best even if you let it set for several days sealed up before you use it. From what I was expecting, this is about the consistency I was looking for. Um, and it's going to give you a nice ground consistency. Of course, you can smooth it out as you put it on. But the color for uh, for my light mountain section, this color is perfect. This is exactly the color I was looking for. I'm going to take my lid and put my lid on it really tight. And I'm going to let that sit overnight. And then tomorrow we'll come back and we will put some of this on the layout and see how it works. I'm back now, uh, and this has actually been sitting in this bowl for 48 hours, so it should have had plenty of time for all of the paint and all of the liquids to, to fully permeate all of the other materials. And you open it up here, and you see it looks pretty much like it did. Um, it's a, a little thick, and of course I can add a little water to this to, to soften it up a little bit. I have a feeling this sherbet container is not as airtight as I'd like. So uh, if I have some of this left to save, what I'm actually going to do is put some saran wrap over this and then seal the, the lid on top of it, and that should help make it more, more airtight. Uh, but we're going to take this out to the layout and see how we put it on uh, an area of the layout. And I'm going to use two different ways of putting this on the layout. Uh, for the most part, I'm going to just put it on by hand. I'm going to use a nitrile glove and um, just kind of smooth and slather this on. And I think by getting just a little moisture on the glove and, and, uh, and, and rubbing it, I can get a real good smooth surface. Uh, getting up close to things like, like rock details and other things, uh, I've also got an artist spatula that I can use for getting in really close to those areas uh, without getting a lot of this material all over those areas. So uh, let's go on out to the layout and see what it takes to get some of this uh, put uh, on my scenery base. This mountain here is going to be the first area that I attempt to use the ground goop. And I've got uh, my, my bowl of ground goop right here. And I've uh, got my nitrile glove on. I've got my spatula handy and a little bit of water. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just, I'm just going to grab a bunch of this ground goop. And I'm going to just start applying it 
here in the center just by rubbing it on. I, I want to put on a layer of this that is about an eighth of an inch thick. And what I'm discovering pretty quickly here, as I suspected, is that my ground goop, as I let it set, some of the moisture has kind of dried out of it. Uh, it's a little thick. Uh, think that we'll want to come back and add some water to this at some point. But for now, I'm going to try to get it on here. And again, I, I don't want it too thick. I want about an eighth of an inch coverage on there. And what I'm going to do is I've got a little bit of water down here in a cup. I'm just going to dip my glove in that. And as I rub that a little bit, I think I can help make that smooth out um, just by allowing the water to kind of here. You can see how that is smoothing out nicely there just because I got a little water on my glove. Uh, I do the exact same thing with plaster when I apply it to get plaster on. And when I get it kind of where I want it and it's starting to set up a little bit, put just a little water on my glove and you can kind of smooth it out. So uh, I can just kind of keep working this area. Um, some of this is almost too tall for me to reach. I may have to get a stool in a little bit to reach up the very top of this. Uh, but I'm, I'm seeing that, that uh, this goes a, a pretty long way. This is a single batch, um, starting with, you know, one cup each of the cellu clay and the vermiculite. So just a, a single batch. And uh, I've put on maybe a fourth of it so far and uh, covering a pretty good, pretty good area here. So, uh, you know, I think this stuff will stretch and, and go a, a long way. But I, I can take my spatula and get a little ground goop on it. And I like around this rock detail, it's hard to get in there with your fingers without getting a lot of that ground goop up all over your, your rock detail. But you see with the spatula, I can just kind of smooth it on and kind of squeeze it right up in, in against that rock and uh, not get too much of this. Because remember, this ground goop has paint in it. So if you get that paint on the rock, it's going to uh, change the color of your rock a little bit. And just like I did with my glove, I can dip my spatula in a little bit of water and come and smooth that out just like I did with my with my glove and with my finger. And you can see this is making a really nice uh, nice look as, as this goes right up against that rock and fills in all of the cracks and crevices. So I'm going to continue with this and I'll just show you probably some bits and pieces as I go forward and then show you uh, this mountain whenever I get it fully covered with the ground goop. And there is my ground goop applied to, uh, to the top of this particular mountain. And uh, as you see, the color matches the color that I had used previously on, uh, on my scenery base pretty well. It's not a perfect match. It doesn't have to be. Um, but as I come back and plant trees and such on that, number one, it's got a real nice texture to it. Uh, and number two, it is that ground color all the way through so uh, anything that is chipped or, or that comes out, I think is going to, to really be easy to, to cover up. Uh, and I think the trees are going to plant in, in it a lot better. Um, this is going to need to set up and to dry. And so I'll probably come back in another video and we'll look at put, applying some uh, ground cover, some real dirt, some static grass, some trees, all kinds of stuff to, to this hill. And I'll show you how it looks and how it works whenever we get to that stage in uh, probably a week or so. Well, as you can see over my shoulder here, 
I think that ground goop is going to blend in and is going to make a very nice ground cover and scenery base for the mountain areas of my layout. I'm excited to see how it works as I start applying scenery material to it. And again, I'll be bringing you some more uh, about that in a video in the not too distant future. So be sure and watch for that. Now, I promised you in the opening of this video that I had some special announcements that I wanted to share with you in the closing of this video, and I'm going to share those with you now. First of all, I have a message to those of you who are waiting for t-shirts and coffee mugs. I, I want to apologize for the delay in those things. Uh, I have t-shirts and coffee mugs for those who won the Down and Dirty Weathering Contest, as well as several people who ordered t-shirts and coffee mugs. I had a little problem with my vendor for my t-shirts. Uh, my, my vendor is a local vendor and uh, they make very nice t-shirts. They do a good job, uh, but they're a small operation. And just about the time I ordered my big order of t-shirts, they got a large order for t uniform t-shirts for local baseball teams, which put them way behind. Therefore, it took me a lot longer to get those than I thought. The good news is I have those on hand now, and I will be shipping out those t-shirts and coffee mugs in the, on the course of the next week or so. So those of you who won the contest, I apologize for the long delay. You can watch for those over the next couple of weeks. Those of you who have ordered t-shirts, I'll be sending you uh, PayPal invoices over the next week or so, uh, so you can pay for those and we can get them to you. The same way with those of you who have ordered coffee mugs, I'll be sending those out. I haven't forgotten, and, uh, and those will be coming up very soon. Now, for the really exciting announcement, I told you that I had some information about a giveaway. If you follow my channel, if you've noticed, I am approaching rapidly 10,000 subscribers. That is a huge milestone, and I am very excited about having come so far and having grown so quickly as, as a channel. I want to thank all of you who watch and subscribe to my videos, and, and I want to thank you in a special way. I'm going to have a little giveaway contest, and, and the prize is going to be very much worthwhile. Uh, I'm going to be giving away a $100 gift certificate to Midwest Model Railroad. Stephen over at Midwest Model Railroad was the sponsor for the, uh, the prizes of my Down and Dirty Weathering Contest, and he's become a good friend. I really appreciate him. And he has a great online store with a wide selection of products from locomotives to rolling stock, accessories, virtually anything you need, you will find it at Midwest Model Railroad. So I'm going to be giving away a $100 gift certificate to Midwest Model Railroad, but let me tell you how you enter. You need to look back through my previous videos, and you need to find a certain scene in the video. That scene is the scene that you're looking at right now. It is the scene where my cat photobombed one of my videos. I need you to go find that scene, I need you to write down the name of the video and the approximate timestamp at which the cat photobombed me in that video. And I need you to send that to me in an email to ronstrainsinthings at gmail.com. That email, of course, will be linked in the description as it is in all of my videos, so you can find it there. Do not put the answer in a comment to the video. You'll be giving it away for everyone else. So to have your best chances, go find that video, find that scene, and send me an email. And, uh, and, and be sure to name the video and the timestamp approximately when, when the cat appeared. Those who do that will be entered into the contest. And by the way, in order to enter this contest, you do need to be a subscriber. This is a thank you for those 10,000 subscribers who subscribe to my channel. So if you've not yet subscribed, you can subscribe now and you will qualify to enter into the contest. Now, this contest has a deadline, but it's a soft deadline. Right now, as of this recording, I'm sitting on about 9,200 subscribers, which means I'm 800 subscribers away from 10,000. The moment at which I hit 10,000 subscribers, the contest ends. So that, in likelihood, based on uh, my statistics right now, will probably be sometime over the next four weeks or so. But you need to watch that, that subscriber count so you'll know exactly when that is. When I hit 10,000, that's the point at which I cut it off. Everyone who has sent me an email up to that point will be entered into the contest, and then I'll be doing a video with a drawing from those entrants for that $100 gift certificate. 
So that was a long description, but I think this will be a lot of fun. I, I look forward to uh, to hearing from you, and I hope you enjoy looking back and finding that scene. Uh, it was it was a fun scene to to have, totally on accident in my videos, uh, my cat photobombing my video. So anyway, I, I hope that you will participate in that, and I look forward to to seeing your entry. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, here's a link to some more videos that I know you'll enjoy as well. Also, be sure and check out the description down below where you're going to find the email where to send your entry into this 10,000 subscriber giveaway, as well as links to my Patreon page, my Amazon page, and my Amazon Pick of the Week. Remember, I'm going to be putting that vermiculite and the celluclay in the Picks of the Week, so be sure and check those out. You'll also find links where you can connect with me on social media. I hope you'll join me again next week as I'll be bringing you another great model railroading segment, and I look forward to seeing you then. Tim, Lizzie?